everyone, welcome to the Worship Artistry Podcast. My name is Jason Houtsma, and with me is... Christina Kasanka. It only took about 10 times to do that right. Jason couldn't say his name. <laughs> Jason Houtsma. Of all the things that you should know how to say... You know, how often do you really say your name, though? It's true. It feels weird that we use last names. I know. Why even bother? But the Russian thing is like a whole different thing, though. Like, I remember reading uh, the brothers... Kar- I'm not going to say it right. Karim... Kar- 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 sure. Mazov. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they always have like all these like different names for like the same yes. characters. How's that work? So we have um, instead of um, our middle names, we have our, our dad's name, and it's called an ochistva. And we it's like a different ending for female and male. Um, so our full names are our like our first name, our like dad's name, and then our last name. So if you are referring to someone properly, you use their first and middle which is fun to refer to them and then yeah it's super confusing when you're reading yes yeah yeah. you're like why does this person have a name with 15 syllables yes yeah and then they keep changing so you're like oh is it is this the same person or is it different and almost a nickname for people then is their like middle name which is just their dad's name it's kind of confusing yeah well uh our guest today Mm. has a very easy name his name is ryan Dahl. Yes. And uh, if you're familiar with Ryan Dahl, he is the he is the founder of Praise Charts. And uh, he's also a good friend. We actually got to talking about how, how like when we first got started, when Worship Artistry first started, how he was the first one to reach out mm, to that's us. Awesome. And it's like we've been friends ever since. And uh, he's just a real inspiring guy. And he's got a lot kind of on his plate, a lot of things that he's excited about. And um, it's, it's more from a passion and worship standpoint than a business standpoint. I think a lot of times when you have these interviews, um, if you're interviewing somebody from a company, mm-hmm. there's kind of like, okay, this is just going to be like one big advertisement. And that's not the case at all. We talk about creating choral arrangements. We talk about what it's like being a, a piano player who's getting left behind in the world of, of keyboard and computers and all Don't those kinds of it. things. <laughs> so, uh, so we actually talk... Uh, about quite a bit, and uh, he's just got some great stories, and so really excited to talk about him. Um, so, without further ado, Ryan Dahl. All right. Well, I am. Uh, I am always, always happy to be talking to this man, someone I look up to in the uh, in the worship world and, and and resources. And he's always kind of thinking, thinking out ahead, and he's always, uh, he always, I always come away inspired. And so, very happy to have Mr. Ryan Dahl of Praise Charts with us. What's up, Ryan? <laughs> Oh, good to be here with you, Jason. Uh, it's good to have friends in this space where you feel like you can be yourself and encourage each other along the way. But uh, I feel like we're doing life together, Jason. So love what you're doing at Worship Artistry. And you inspire me as well. <laughs> I look at your site and go, man, we need to make our site look better like this. So, well, you're, you're, doing, you're doing the same thing to us. We're, we're actually redesigning our whole homepage and trying to like tell our story better. You know, I Mm -hmm. think it's amazing how much the industry has changed. Like just all the worship resources that are out there. I mean, when we first started, you know, we started and it was like, we're going to do these online guitar lessons. And that wasn't anywhere besides YouTube. And we designed it all and had, and also all we had to do is be like, look, this is what we do. (laughs) And everyone just got it right away, you know, but now you have, now there's, you know, there's other people in the space and there's, you know, people are learning from different places, which is great. It's always like, hey, are we, are more people learning to lead worship and do it well? Like, great. Like, awesome. Yeah. But we want to tell yeah. people our story of like, this is what we're about. And this is why it's, this is why it's so, this yeah. is why we're so amped about it. You know? I so know. I love that, that phrase to tell our story. I feel like in the age of 2020, after coming through all these years of technology and social media, but people, we all have this innate desire to tell our story. And it's really the only thing that connects on a, on a deeper personal level, right? So right. you have to some, take the quantified mechanics of what we do and turn it into something personal and human. And, and um, that's how Jesus taught, right? Like right. Jesus told stories. He didn't do three point sermons. So that's my little (laughs) soapbox about that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I know it's funny. I remember, I remember the time that that I first realized how important story was because I was, I was at a friend's church. I don't even remember why I was there. I think I was there for maybe a baby dedication or something, but there was another guy that was speaking and, you know, he talked for the usual time that you talk and give a sermon. 
And I couldn't tell you anything about that. Mm-hmm. But the last 10 minutes, he, he had been a military chaplain and he told the story about being on the field and this thing that had happened. And it was just like, mm-hmm. so I happened. literally didn't need any of the other stuff. I like that was, was completely yeah. unnecessary. And maybe somebody else was able to grab something from that for sure. But yeah, I'm always just like, oh, just, just tell me the story. Mm-hmm. I think there's a song about that. Well, you probably have a chart of that somewhere. Uh, probably. Tell Laura me. Story. There you go. It's yeah. by Laura Story. <laughs> Well, tell tell me some of your story. What have you got going on, my friend? Okay. Well, we do have a couple of things. Where to begin? Uh, I think I'll start on the choral thing, since you said you were kind of interested in that. A little bit of the story there is I went to a conference in Nashville like six weeks ago thinking I was going to a place I didn't belong because we're not really a choral publisher. And... Um, But the choral world has been going through a bit of upheaval in the last, because of COVID. Imagine, like, even in praise charts, if I look at the sale of our, like, choir sheets, it's, like, dismal, you know, Mm -hmm. through COVID. Because naturally, choirs haven't been meeting as much. So, fortunately, praise charts wasn't, like, you know, totally into choir or we might not have survived the last couple of years fortunately we had other things going but uh, at any rate went to this conference and I uh, certainly felt a little bit out of place but then also just like we're talking about the story I thought I got a story to share and I want to come here and drop a bomb <laughs> a little bit as far as the story that I, I wanted to share and so um, so I did that had an incredible experience. I actually led worship with Charity Gale on stage. Oh, no I don't know if you know yeah. Charity. She's like a huge voice. And so we brought Charity to this conference and Charity came up on stage and I had my guitar there, which I had told the whole story about. It was like my dad's guitar and my dad passed away. And I told all the things about how that guitar came about and anyways and then I sat at the piano and Charity's singing and I'm playing you know thank you Jesus for the blood which is like the biggest song in oh, yeah. 2022 yep I am I just, absolutely I just tracked like, it bes- yeah <laughs> I am beside myself at the grand piano thinking what am I doing here I am playing <laughs> for her it was so <laughs> awesome and then that night Travis Gottschall came he came on the stage and we did like a full choir, big band, big choir. And then Charity came up as a surprise guest. I played for that section of the concert. And I'm telling you, it was like a defined moment in my life. There you go. There's my first story. I went away shaken up. Like, mm-hmm. I want to do this. I want to make more experiences like this it was it was really really awesome so anyways all that to say is within a week i had met with a new with an orchestrator that travis cottrell put me on to and um and now i just full scale hired him full time and he is producing and arranging a brand new series of songs that we're calling the signature sessions the mm-hmm. praise charts signature sessions i think i might have told you about this before jason but it's like if if we could do everything we ever wanted to do to make these songs just amazing for choir led orchestra led congregational worship and a lot of times albums aren't recorded with that in mind no. they have other agendas you know mm-hmm. they're like let's record us in a living room singing for 14 minutes, you know, over and over and over a really great song. (laughs) It's just, it doesn't translate to Sunday morning for (laughs) most of us. Right. So songs like Gyra, you know, uh, or things like that coming out of Maverick city and, and other songs. I mean, there's one, there's the arrangement. Second, there's the key. Sometimes it's like Chris or, um, well, Tomlin for sure, but uh, Phil Wickham, they're just singing, <laughs> singing in the stratosphere. <laughs> and then, right, how are we supposed to do that on Sunday morning? So we just kind of thought, let's put these songs in K 
keys that people can sing. Let's do them in arrangements that still sound awesome, but make sense for a Sunday morning. And then let's write really great orchestra that doesn't feel like you're reading out of the back of a hymnal, the, you know, the, mm. the orchestra parts like that really sound sort of symphonic and cinematic and sound like it belongs within a modern rhythm section. So all these dreams started like evolving and, and literally like this is all happening three or four weeks ago. I am back and forth voice messaging with this orchestrator and we're both like coming alive with a new dream for the sound of the choir and orchestra in the church. And it's literally like evolving minute by minute. And he's sending me back, back new mixes and we're adding parts or creating this and that. And, and then we were just like listening to it and going, Oh my goodness. Like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And, and Mason, my, uh, my orchestrator, he's also responding to me going, Ryan, like, I just feel like, I can't wait to get up in the morning and just, I just want to do this. Like <laughs> I feel awakened inside. Yeah. So um, needless to say, we're super excited. Now here's a, here's a really cool story, Jason. This is what I was going to share with you is I sent one of the things we're trying to do is record the choirs with some of our top churches in praise charts. So I took my top customers and sent an email to them thinking some of them must have the capacity to record their choir. And so I sent an email out to about, you know, a hundred of the guys and most of them weren't able to respond, but I got a few that did respond and they caught the vision. Uh, I, and so, so I've got a couple of them on deck to record on top of the track that we've provided. So then just two days ago, I sent out another email to 50 guys and it's been crickets for a couple of days. And I thought, oh no, have I missed the boat? Well, just this morning I got an email and I'm just going to read you a little bit of what he said. He's like this guy who got one of my quote unquote, um, you know, emails to 50 guys. He says, our ranger forwarded me the email you sent regarding the signature sessions project you're working on. When I read it, I ran to my wife shouting about it. He's <laughs> like, I can't stress how much I think you're doing something great here. I feel there are actually multiple ways our church is suited to help. For years, I felt like we have a role to play in bringing participationable choir-led worship back to churches in our fellowship and done with excellence, relevance, and sincerity. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a more powerful instrument on stage than a mass group of peer worshipers. And this is a church of a major denomination, and it's like the flagship church of one of the major top five kind of denominations in North America. So I was like, oh, I felt like I just went fishing and I landed like a big <laughs> Sam, <laughs> I didn't even ask this guy if I could share his email, but if you know who you are and you're listening to this, uh, I loved this. You know when you talk to someone and they're like, the light goes on yes. and they just get it? So, so we're just in like the early stages of catching new vision for um, the choir and orchestra in, in church notwithstanding anything that we have been doing for the last 20 years, we're going to keep doing it like we've been doing it. We're just going to be adding another layer and uh, I'm super excited about it. So that's amazing. You know, it, it's so interesting. The, I've been thinking a lot about congregational worship as I do. That's a part of my job, but you know, just yeah. thinking about, you know, the trends that have happened and kind of the movements that have happened. Right. And you, you kind of have these, these different, movements like I like for me I think back to when you know we went from singing give thanks which was at that time like mm -hmm. a movement right and then it was like yeah. vineyard came out and delirious and they were doing more like five piece rock band kind of stuff you know mm -hmm. and then it started turning then you had like Tomlin and and then there was kind of this other worship sound where it was more like kind of U2 and kind of like everything kind of had that kind of a sound right and it's like right. and we have all these amazing artists 
that are putting out all this content. But you think about the fact that like a lot of these guys have been doing it for 20 years now. Right. Like, yeah. and, and I think that there is a desire in the worldwide church for just more, like just something different, right. something outside of yeah. like, listen, I really appreciate that, that, that at the time that this is what was, what was necessary. I mean, there is a, there's a, uh, a great video that uh, George from uh, CCLI sent me and it's about this guy. Okay. And he's like, he's like me trying to like a music I hate, which is uh, Christian music. And so he's like this secular yeah. guy who's like trying to get it. And he talks about how it's on YouTube. I forget, I forget what I'll send it to you if I can find it. But the, um, he talks about how he's like, yeah, this music doesn't really do anything for me. Like the actual music of it. It's just not, mm -hmm. not what I'm into. But he then started talking about how he called it musicking. He's like about what happens when people get together and all sing together. And what happens in a church body is different than what happens on a recording. Like there's just no mm -hmm. way to really capture that thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so as we're, and then he was like, and that's how I can, that's how I can wrap my brain around this. That's how I can get this, you know? And I think that like, you know, you've, you've been, you have been serving the church with charts and, you know, like, and all these resources while at the same time, you're also a musician yourself. You also lead worship yourself. Yeah. You also like, that's a big part of who yeah. you are. That doesn't come out of like, you might not be the guy from X church that everybody's looking to, you know, you're not like, Oh, well I'm with Hillsong, this church. So therefore I automatically yeah. have a voice, but you have so much to offer and so much to bring mm -hmm. to the worship world. And I think that like I know for myself as a worship pastor, I'm looking for other things. I'm looking for things mm -hmm. that don't sound like, like not saying that the, that, that what is mainstream is bad, but it's just kind of like, we have, we have a lot of that. That doesn't mean that's not yep. the only thing that's there. That's not the only thing that's right. out there. And so you bringing in this, like, how do we get, yeah. how do we get more choir happening? How do we get more orchestra happening? I mean, I go to, I, I mean, I go to a like 60 person church, so we'd need the whole church to reproduce what you're yeah. talking about, <laughs> which could be fun. Could be fun. But, uh, <laughs> but at the same time, I just think it's really interesting how, you know, it's like, you're doing this. I mean, loop community is doing something similar where they're bringing worship songs that they're writing. And like, cause we're all steeped in this. We're all doing this. We're all living out this thing. Mm -hmm. And what naturally pours out of you when you sit down at the piano, like mm -hmm. we can, we can all learn from that. We can all grow from that. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And trust me, like I'm as much into the small, intimate acoustic worship times with whatever 12 people i regularly lead worship for like 12 people you know it, it, behind a microphone and on a on a you know a piano kind of thing but the trust there's like there's no lights there's no grand stage and uh it's beautiful beautiful moments i'll be leading worship in a in a couple of weeks for just a very intimate kind of candlelit style uh, time so i'm i love that but I also have a vision for like the big um, this week. Okay, get this this week with one of the people on our team. We're dreaming about what it could be like to have a choir of like more than 100,000 people. Now, that's not all going to happen in the same physical space. But like these are the levels of the other side of the dream. What if we could simulcast a stadium experience that was multi-linked to other stadiums or congregations or things like that and it's actually like possible i was literally talking to a, a big name music producer writer who's like yeah we could make that happen like let's do that ryan so so i'm into the big and the small and and you know, everything in between right so. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. You can see it's, but I think the thing is, it's like, there's inspiration there, right? Like you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're getting a sense of something that is inspiring you and then going and chasing that and right. like, and recognizing that like, yeah, this isn't going to be for everybody, but this is for somebody. And it, because it's striking mm -hmm. a chord in your heart, right? It's like, it's going to strike a chord in, in others and mm -hmm. maybe it'll be big or maybe it'll be small, but it's like, you'll make a difference in, in some environment, mm -hmm. which is just incredible. Yeah, it's kind of like that email I sent out to 50 guys. I thought surely 25 of them would email me back right away and say, I'm in, Ryan. But two days of silence. <laughs> and then I just needed one person to be like, I see the vision 
I'm where with you, Ryan. So uh, I'm going to chase that. So anyways, that's our coral world. Oh, that's, that's really exciting. Well, uh, well, that's got me fired up. Um, what, 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 what else you got going on? Just keep it going. Okay. I'll tell you, I've got other stuff. This is, this is another topic that you and I have common ground in because I noticed that worship artistry started showing up in CCLI and song select world. And I called you, I'm like, so when did CCLI <laughs> buy you? You know, when did the big acquisition happen? I'm still sitting in, I'm no, still sitting in my little office. So <laughs> yeah. I thought that's how corporate world works is big giant companies come and eat up the small fish. Right. So, <laughs> but apparently that's not the case. And, and even a company so substantial with long history as uh, CCLI is out to like cooperate and work alongside. It's been tremendous. I don't know the details of what's going on with you, but I know that with us, like, let me tell you something, just square up here. Probably our biggest full scale competitor is song select. Mm -hmm. I mean, where else do people go to get chord charts and lead sheets? They go to song select, they go to praise charts, and then I'm sure there's other places too, but those are two big, yeah you know, head to headers. And literally last week, CCLI unveiled a major upgrade to, or a minor upgrade, I guess you might say, to song select. And they're linking top of the fold to praise charts from their song select pages. And today we are rolling out a like internal, deep, um, contextually meaningful links to songs to CCLI in particular, trying to help people know about where you can make copies and where you can use your CCLI license. So we've kind of come up with this cooperative, let's like promote each other instead of fight with each right. other. So the whole concept of turning competition on its head and representing, you know, church and quote unquote business uh, just really fires me me up. So that's been kind of my experience. I don't know if you have any experience like that. I mean, even with you, you sell chord charts and do videos. We do things that kind of overlap, but it just becomes secondary when you re-envision yourself kind of on the same team. So, so yeah, that's just another very fresh, very current story, I guess you might say, that's a bit alarming. It would certainly be alarming to a lot of business tycoons out there. They're like, yeah, I wouldn't do that. I would go right. either eat them up or do up some exclusive deal that, you know, that edges them out of the market or that's just the way business is done. So, yeah, it's, so. it's it is really interesting. Like, I think, you know, I, was, I had Matt McCoy on here just a couple of mm -hmm. weeks ago and we were talking about innovators and just this group that he, he kind of brought together, like envisioned and mm -hmm. gathered together and just how... Um, I think you're right. I think there's a sense of, of, uh, you would think, I remember I did some videos with Brian wall from worship tutorials mm -hmm. and people were all mm -hmm. right. Like, I thought you guys, I can't believe I'm seeing you guys on the same video. It seems like you guys would be competing with each other. And it's like, right now we're buddies. We, we, <laughs> we, we want, like, we want people to learn worship music. That's like we're, what we're doing, you know? Yeah. And, and when you have that kingdom mindset, and I mean, CCLI is the perfect example of this. Like we've, we've been teaming up with them. They've been um, just awesome with us. And I, the more that I ask about that, cause I remember, I remember when initially they were like, Hey, we want to partner with you. We want to do some things. I was just like, this is like too good to be true. Like you're, I we don't, know. you're so much bigger. We don't really have yeah. anything to offer you, you know? And, and now I'm realizing, oh, okay, there's, there are things that we can offer. Like as we've grown to learn about their business a little more, we're like, oh, we can offer this. Um, but you know, you're kind of like, is this, are you, are you sure? Like, but I yeah. keep just every step that I take and get to know them. I'm just like, you guys just, you guys just get it. You get what you're here to yeah. do. You have a real clear vision about we're here to serve the church. We're not trying to nickel and dime the yeah. church. We're not trying to like, like yeah. find ways to squeeze more dollars out of the church. We just want to keep supporting the church. So anybody who's going to do that, like we want to, we want to help. Let's figure out how to do that. Yeah. You know? And it's, yeah. And I don't know any other industry that does that. Great. Right. It's yeah. just, it's, it's just an amazing thing. And so it's been, it's been super amazing mm -hmm. to work with them. And obviously, you know, with you guys, I remember you reached out, 
I think it was the very first, we put our, our ad in Worship Leader Magazine when we were first launching. And we were just like, all right, our big spend, we're going to put a, a full page ad in Worship Leader Magazine. And right away, I get an email from Ryan Dahl from Praise Charts. Hey, we'd love to uh, saw you doing something. We'd love, to, we'd love to chat. And I was just like, yeah, this is awesome. Also, uh-oh, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> And it turns out you're amazing. So here we are. Yeah. Well, and we live actually for people to know, we live literally 20 minutes away from each other, but it takes us six hours to get to each other's house because we got to go through, you know, a giant wall, in the border and have six dozen COVID tests before we can, you know, be in each other's presence. But, I hear uh, they're going to change it. Hey. I hear we're going to get to use the, uh, yeah, the antigen maybe. tests, maybe. Yeah. And so, I got my Nexus we'll pass. I'll finally actually get to use it. I've had it for like two years. I've been able right. to like, do I get extra years on my Nexus pass to get me yeah. over the border? What's going on? Yeah. Well, hey, so tell that's me. the story of Jason and I. We are we are <laughs> literally literally close. But I, I love that story, and I I wanted to say this is um, part of my early story of praise charts. One of the most challenging seasons is when I was a full time worship pastor and contemplating making this leap into kind of business. And I felt like the wrath of God, you know, breathing over me, thinking you're going to abandon your call and go into business. Like, like, who do you think you are? How could you do that? And um, and that was like such a wrestle. I'm sure many people in our world could identify with that kind of transition. But but then I sort of like turned that into how about if I like bring the spirit of the church into um, business, right? Like how about if we lead a business, like we would lead a church right? instead of like just leading a church, like we would do a business. But what if, what if, uh, businesses could function like that authentic, you know, serving others kind of mode and, and non-protective. So I'm, I'm kind of my personal mission to, to, um, you know, demonstrate that or try that out. And it's, it's not always perfect, but it's definitely a road I'm on. That's a really cool way to say that. I love that. Like if we actually ran our business like the church rather than our church like a business. I think it's right. just such a really clear way because one thing that has always got, it's like my my number one pet peeve is you can just probably feel me getting like anxious. But when yeah. somebody says like, yeah, that's great. But the, in the business world, like if I can't, if I can't live out my faith in the business world, then the business world is broken. <laughs> you know, like, right. like I yeah. can't, if, right. if I have to be somebody different or I have to go do something different and not be inclusive and not be loving and caring and outreach focused, right. like if I can't be that, if I have to be self-protected and like, like then I don't really want to be in business. Like that's, right. that's not what, that's not what I'm here to do. Like I want to do something yeah. so much different. And so it's just yeah. super, and you know, not everybody's like that. And it's yeah. just really cool that we've gotten to see this group like this amazing group of people that are all on that same page and are all just like loving mm -hmm. each other which gets me mm -hmm. fired up for that innovators conference yeah coming up in october october in person and that's in yeah. theory and that's in really person. been the heart of that <laughs> it's like a bunch of competitors all came together decided to form a community and you know and celebrate each other and promote each other so that's like why we do these podcasts together so it's really great it's a good thing well, hopefully it makes for good listening. Uh, speaking of good listening, let's talk about your yeah. uh, your worship keys. What are you talking about? You, okay. you sent me some stuff on that. I was, I was looking at that and I was like, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Tell me more. Okay. Well, like the theme of this podcast, everything has a story. The story of that is this. Like you're a guitar player deep down in your heart and an amazing one at that. I, uh, I know how to play guitar, but I like, I really love to play the piano and I have learned to play on an upright piano from my living room, but I always dreamed of playing a grand piano. I used to go into our school auditorium and set the spotlight on the grand piano in this auditorium of 500 people. Nobody was in there and I would turn all the lights off, just shine it on the grand piano and just go and like play as though the world was listening in. It was just like this, this experience that I had, right? So anyways, I've grown up in the church playing piano, but in parallel to that, it's been kind of frustrating to me that this whole automated, um, you know, electronic kind of technical approach 
to playing keyboards has arisen up and people have all these sounds and I watch these keyboard players and they got computers beside them and I'm like, I don't have any idea what's even on that computer. Like, what are they doing? You know, how are they? <laughs> They're actually just watching just, YouTube. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Right. What show are they watching? No, it frustrated me and started to make me feel left out because I'd go to my modern church and I literally saw the grand piano, a seven foot Yamaha C7 at the back side of the stage collecting dust with a cover half on while there's this little, you know, fritzy electronic keyboard in the center of the stage. And I'm like, I want to play that thing. Right. right. I want to play the thing. <laughs> over in the corner. I literally did that to my church. I went to the worship pastor and a few Sundays, they reoriented the stage for me and hauled out this big grand piano, mic'd it up so I could play because uh, I had wanted to do that. But anyways, I feel like right now we're in an era where there's probably a lot of people like me who feel kind of intimidated and a little bit left behind by the you know, the whole computer based music world. It's mm -hmm. and and then what I find is with some softwares that are out there, they're like, hey, get our software and here's six hundred sounds that you can use on a Sunday morning. Most so of them sound crazy. Have, <laughs> I know. You could sound like an alien, you could sound like a spaceship, you could sound like look at all these cool things and arpeggiators. And even at then, I'd be like, my head would be exploding going, I don't need that chaos. Right. Because uh, I have like the mind of a, a grand piano, but I want kind of the experience. So, so, um, so that's kind of been the heart behind Worship Keys is what if we could try to boil this program down? That is 30 bucks for anyone that owns a Mac. It's an amazing program for 30 bucks. And I hired a, a programmer, a, a music programmer who definitely needed me because it's like he had the mind of how to program it, but I wanted to keep it simple and keep it like focused on worship and not to clutter it too much. So, um, so that's what we've tried to do with worship keys. I feel like the, the road ahead of us is still long and hard to try to really prove the uh, the value of this and for now it's free and we're even making song specific tracks that are free uh just so people could try to experience the a new side of playing piano that uh that doesn't leave them in the dust so so there you go that's kind of like the heart mm -hmm. behind what we've tried to do with worship keys so is it so it's basically like a slim down version of a it's like it's like the things that it's like the stuff you like everything you need and, and nothing you don't like kind that of kind yeah. of an approach to it where it's like okay Very much that. here's your organ here's your piano like, here's your pad here's your yes and then there are other things that are actually quite complex and technical but the person that is using worship keys doesn't really have to go into there it's just we're trying to provide like for example i'm looking at it right now and i thought I don't want 600 sounds. I just need eight sounds. And right. I probably, most people only need about four or five. So we've got like altar pads, which means, think, <laughs> okay, pastor's up there. He's that's leading like, that's like, Tells prayer. me everything you need to know. I know. <laughs> it's just like, I just want to play a pad that doesn't get in the way, that has a sweet, you know, okay, altar pads. And then altar piano which is, okay, now I want to just bring in a little bit of piano. It's like typical, classic, you know, every church needs this stuff. And then there's a couple others that are like a, a bright piano or epic synth so that if I'm doing What a Beautiful Name and it goes into that, you have no rival. I mean, mm -hmm. you can hear it, right? Yeah. It just gets big and you want to like fill it out. So we'll give you that like epic sound. But then beyond that, we're making song specific patches so that it's like, OK, you're playing. This is Amazing Grace. There's some particular iconic sounds that come into that. You don't have the time to program all the complexities of what that is. So we'll just give it to you. We lay it out. 
first course, bridge, 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 course, bridge, tag, ending. And then you can modify it and work with it, but it's like we're giving you the goods yeah. to just play the song like you know you want to sound, right? And so, um, yeah. Well, it's so funny because I even, you know, I find that myself, like I'll be recording stuff at home on Logic or whatever, you know, and I now have my presets of things that I save. Like, and I, I, I can find yeah. my way. I took six years of piano. It took me guitar lessons yeah. to actually understand what was going on on the piano. But, you know, yeah. I can I can find my way around on the piano now. But it is yeah. shocking how hard it's like, no, I just want that, like, basic synth sound that I hear in everything. Where is I that? Know. And it's like, <laughs> no, I need to cycle through a 100 different synths and then find right. out none of them are the right tone and be like, am I in the wrong right. bank? What is going on? Yeah. So having yeah. something that just goes, no, this is the one that you want. Trust me. I know what right. you want. You've heard it in everything. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. Is a is such a it's such a great idea, right. and does it allow and so it does allow you though to like tweak and make adjustments on it and that kind of thing yes. if you want to kind of play with it because that's the thing that like Ryan King our keyboard instructor you know he has yeah. we 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 offer patches but they're he uses Omnisphere and kind of more of these high end things to do yeah. it but he always kind of shows you like oh we're gonna fade up a filter here and do these you know so you can still yeah. kind of do those things but at least you have like the baseline of like here's the important yeah. stuff that I really need. And then if yeah, I want to get weird from here, well, I can. If, if, if anybody ever sees the video, you can see this. This is called a like a Korg Nano Control. So we designed our system. It's a very common um, like little MIDI controller for 80 bucks. But that gives you like the, the tangible uh, faders and knobs so that you can, you know, tweak the sound slightly there's a, a couple of other cool things like something called a drone i literally didn't even know what a drone was when i went into this worship keys world but a drone it's not like something you're flying during <laughs> you know the worship service just so you know i don't and know some of these big mega churches actually, you never know <laughs> yeah, i actually thought here i thought that a drone was like that synth pad but you would play a progression you know, C, F, G, A minor, you would play all the synths. But apparently the way a drones work is if you're playing in the key of C or D, let's say I was doing What a Beautiful Name, you just set the drone to play a D, like open synth, and it can play through the whole song. And when you build a band on top of it, it just creates like space and depth to the sound. So yeah. that's the purpose of a drone. It's super common, but I bet at least half your listeners might have not have been like, I didn't even know that existed or what that is. So worship keys has a drone built into it that you can control from this nano control. If you, you know, kind of connect with that. So that's cool. And then one other thing I want to say, this has been kind of like the, the light went on. I have Omnisphere and I have no idea how to use it because it has 6,427 <laughs> sounds right. and they're all amazing, but I have no idea. But I'll tell you what's, it's called a, a virtual a VST, right? Virtual synth instrument or something like that. I can't remember what it stands for, but it's a common term for these instruments that you can buy. And I have enjoyed buying a couple of really nice grand pianos because that's a part of my story is right. I wanted to play that grand piano and it's worth it to have a nice sounding piano on your piano, but your, your keyboard or your computer, I mean, but you're going to have to pay for it. It'll cost you three, four hundred dollars. I've done that. Um, like there's one called Noir or another one, um, Addictive Keys. Now, these are VSTs that you buy, and you're really just focusing on one or two sounds, mm -hmm. but it's so worth it. It's like, imagine you get, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you should see, they've got pictures of these pianos that they're recording to get these um, virtual sounds in your computer, and there's like 600 microphones around the piano because they're trying to capture all the nuance and uh, of even the pedals and the strings and the vibration and the the touch so so worship keys allows you to go and buy yourself a really nice piano and then embed that into your worship keys experience oh, so cool. we we can't sell worship keys with that 400 dollars piano but if you want to put your 
you know, special instrument that you really like, you can do that. And we've got instructions on how to, how to like incorporate all that. So that's kind of a unique bent that again, goes back to my grand piano. Like just imagine the picture of me sitting at the grand piano with the spotlight in the empty auditorium. It's like inspired by that moment of, I still believe that there's something about a really nice piano sound at, at church on Sunday morning. Right. So. Oh, for sure. I mean, there's yeah. nothing, I mean, even me who doesn't really play piano, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, 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 at, the, at my church, we actually meet in this like little gym because we share a church with someone else. And so we meet yeah. in this little gymnasium area and then we have a store. We have to break everything down and I go put that in the storage closet. I'm always the last one there because I'm the one packing it all away. And there's a little just upright piano and I just go and like sit down and play that a little bit just like before I leave every time. And just the weight and the touch and the feel of the pedals and everything. And yeah. there's not like a, it's not yeah. like some super fancy piano, but it's just like this is different than sitting there on my little MIDI keyboard trying to like hash out right. these things You're like, oh, yeah, I feel everything, yeah. you know, like there's just yeah. that's that's worth doing for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why we get into music, man. Right. Like those are the things. Yeah. Yes, we all lead worship and we love leading worship and we love being a part of that. But we're just we're musicians. We just love yeah. those little pieces, those things. I still love yeah. turning the knobs on my pedals to dial in the right sound. You know, like I right. know that yeah. I can get I can get a helix and I can get all these different yes. things that everybody's got, <laughs> but I'm like, I just like turning that knob and then switching that yeah. little switch and seeing how it changes, you know? Like Right. And you know, we can it's it's amazing what you can do with those little things, so well, yeah. well, Ryan, That's great. I'll tell you, man, I, like I said, I always come away inspired when I talk with you and getting mm. to just hear your heart and see, like I said, I, 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 we'll have to put video of this somewhere because your eyes just light up. You start talking about the choral and the <laughs> orchestra and I'm like, oh, yes. that's yes, absolutely. Know, right? it, com it comes yeah. through in the voice too, but man, I, yeah. I'm so grateful that we have mm. people uh, in this space like you who are still passionate and still pushing boundaries and still trying to find other ways to just get down and serve the church, man. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. always, it's always an encouragement. So thanks for taking the mm -hmm. time with us. Well, you, I feel like you just like mined out the stories from deep inside me. So, <laughs> you know, get me talking and I just want to keep going. So oh, thanks very much. They're all at the surface. Come on. You're they're all, yeah. they're all ready to go. <laughs> yeah. So have you ever actually done anything with choral arrangements? Um, not in church. I was a part of choirs in school and I loved it, but never like arranging a choir parts for church. Ever. Yeah. I mean, his whole <laughs> idea of taking an orchestra mm -hmm. and a choir and having it, that be your Sunday church arrangement. Amazing. Yeah. It would be, it would be incredible. It's always been my dream to like really play yeah. with a string section. I think we're just so used to being in small churches, you and I. Because for the first time, like two, no, maybe three years ago now, I went to a church in Texas. No, it was Nashville. Yeah, it was Nashville. I went to a church and it was a, a huge like church. I wouldn't call it a mega church, but it was probably seating like 5,000 people. That yeah, and, I would call that a mega church. Yeah. What, what, what is your well, definition of a I mega don't church? Know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I associate mega church with like the church names that you know, I guess. Sure. But So it was a huge church. And for their Sunday morning worship... It was a choir and a full orchestra. That's awesome. With like, in addition to just like your regular five piece band. And I was blown away. I was like, this is Sunday morning church. Like, <laughs> This exists. I was amazed. Well, I think about it almost like, you know, if you, if you go back to like the old cathedrals, right, there's this idea of you, you almost feel the grandeur of God or at least a taste of it yeah. by walking into this architecture. Yeah. And I think having music that expands to that big and that level of, of epicness, mm -hmm. I think just kind of like drives home a little harder, just like what it, who our God is, Yeah. you know? Totally. And you know, it's, it's, he's totally there. You know, I love, I love my little acoustic sets and I love leading with a band and I love all those things, but I, I can see how, Man, when you get, I mean, think about passion, right? Mm -hmm. And you go and have like a, a conference at thousands and thousands of people. Yeah. And it's like, that's just different. That is just different. It communicates yep. something different about our God. And, uh, and so I can't wait to hear his arrangements. I think they're going to be amazing. I, yeah, they're going to be stellar. 
What if they're terrible? No, <laughs> I don't believe it. No, no. <laughs> they're gonna be really good. <laughs> no, Ryan. Ryan is a man who who values quality, so yes. I I can't wait to hear it. Yeah. So if you're interested in these curl arrangements, be sure to go over to PrayShorts.com and check it out. We we're sure that they're amazing. Yeah. I don't know if we'll use them, but yeah, I think you know we're gonna stick with the five piece thing because yeah. that's that's what yeah. we do well. It's good. I think it's good for us to have different uh everyone to be kind of in different yeah. spots you we'll know? just leave it to the experts yeah and maybe you let us know <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you love them yeah. i'm sure you will um it's and, a lot of teachers to get yeah <laughs> imagine if we had to teach cho- choir arrangements we My do goodness. occasionally get like some random instrument requests it'll be like well do you guys teach mandolin it's like no we don't clarinet yep we've gotten clarinet people yeah. have flute Flute, flute, saxophone. Yes, saxophone. Yeah. I actually shared a monitor with a saxophone player when I was in college, and I loved her. She was a wonderful person, but oh my gosh. <laughs> it was just like, I don't, I have no idea what's happening. Yeah. She's soloing through this entire song, and she was amazing at it. Yeah. But I definitely was just kind of like, I guess I'll just play a couple chords. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you need lessons or a direction on how to play s- songs with only five instruments... <laughs> You and three-part harmony. And three-part harmony. Then you can head over to worshipartistry.com and start a free trial. Or just log in if you're already a member and check out all the new stuff that we have added. We're adding a lot of new songs. All the time. And they're great. So go check us out. All right. We'll see you next time.